one. Doctor, In the future, one. treatment of diabetes will consist of donation of a cell sample and after time receiving personalized insulin reducing cells. This might sound like a science fiction movie. However, with the help of stem cells, we are one step closer into making this fiction a reality. Stem cells hold the potential to replace almost any type of cells, and this is already being applied in the treatment of many diseases, with countless applications being discovered daily. Diabetes is a chronic metabolic disease characterized by elevated blood sugar, which leads over time to serious damage to the heart, blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. Right now, almost half a billion people worldwide have diabetes. For many of them, the only available treatments are symptomatic, which can be expensive, inefficient, and uncomfortable. That's why many laboratories, including ours, are actively searching for alternative treatments for diabetes. Using genetic modification methods, we designed experiments to artificially synthesize insulin-reducing cells. My name is Noor Ibrahim. I am a PhD student in my second year. And without further ado, let me present you our work. The leading strategy in the treatment of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes in the context of regenerative medicine is replenishment of beta cell mass. There are two common approaches to replenish beta cells. First, transplantation of allogenic ILPs, and secondly, transplantation of programmed beta cells derived from other cell types. The problems associated with allogenic transplantation, such as the lack of healthy donor ILPs and the immune risk associated with transplantation, encourage beta cell production through reprogramming techniques. Cellular reprogramming means alter altering the state of an already differentiated cell into other types of specialization, which can be used for tissue repair and regeneration. Many cells of different exo and endoderm origins are being studied in the process of reprogramming using different protocols. We came up with a hypothesis that starting with cells which share the same pancreatic progenitor with beta cells might be advantages in the process of reprogramming. That's why we made up the following objectives to successfully isolate pancreatic mesenchymal cells, characterize and study their features and phenotype, optimize a reprogramming protocol for obtaining insulin producing cells, and finally studying the functionality and characteristics of the obtained cells. In this regard, we isolated pancreatic mesenchymal cells from six different donors using enzymatic digestion and fecal gradient separations. Cells were cultured under normal culture mediums in DMEM plus the 10% serum. Morphologically isolated cells grow from the ILTS in the form of a monolayer attached to the surface culture and have an elongated fibroblast-like morphology. When examining surface markers, cells are found to be positive for mesenchymal stem cells markers, such as CD90 and CD44. This means, according to the International Society for Cell Therapy, that they meet two of the three criteria for identifying mesenchymal stem cells. When comparing gene expression to human fibroblast, our cells express endodermal progenitor markers and endocrine genes, which may indicate greater, a greater likelihood of differentiation into endocrine cells. We further immortalize the cell lines by introducing a human telomerase with reverse transcriptase. Synthesizing beta, beta cells from non-beta cells is best achieved by mimicking the natural process in which the cells are developed during pancreas genesis. Based on years of developmental biology st studies, we have an idea about the necessary transcription factors and signaling molecules that control the natural process of beta cell differentiation. That's why in the process of optimizing the differentiation protocol, we study the essential and non-essential factors that support cell differentiation in two beta cells. That includes influence of various cultural media and the influence of various transcription factors and small molecules that inhibit or activate signaling pathways at different stages of differentiation. We found out that the optimal Variant is DMEM with high glucose and low serum concentration in combination with transcription factors known as BMN, which are BDX1, MAFA, and Neurogenin 3. 
Using the antiviral transduction of a plasmid harboring PMM factors, we ran two rounds of selective sorting and we assessed the efficiency of transduction using real-time PCR. We obtained an immortalized cell line that expressed endocrine and beta cell markers, most importantly NKX 6.1 and NKX 2.2 and BGX1, compared to, con to control cell lines. Morphologically, our cells resemble mesenchymal stem cells and possess fibroblast-like structure. The hallmark of a successful beta cell differentiation is insulin secretion, and our cell lines secreted both insulin and C-peptide in small amounts compared to other cell lines. We concluded that obtaining immortalized insulin-producing cells that express beta cell markers can be achieved by isolation of mesenchymal cells from a human pancreas transduction with, with transcription factors BMN alongside small molecules to inhibit or activate specific pathways. However, the obtained cells are not bona fide beta cells since they are multi-hormonal and secrete insulin inefficiently, which indicate further characterization and protocol optimization. We will also have to test glucose responsiveness and ability to normalize blood sugar in vivo. With that, I'm approaching the ending of this presentation. I want to say there is still a huge gap between research laboratories and hospitals, and our job is to shrink this gap as much as possible. This can be done only through our collective collaboration, represented by similar scientific conferences. And that's why I want to thank all the organizers and professors who made this meeting possible. And I'm sorry that I can't be there in person to answer your questions, but I will be happy to answer them via email. Thank you all. Shukran.